Hey everybody, this is Scott from Speedwheels Photography, and uh, this video over here is was filmed out at uh, West World of Scottsdale at the International Off-Road and UTV Expo, December 6th through the 8th of 2019. It uh, was sponsored by Rugged Radios, and they had guest speakers come in on a daily basis, and one of the guest speakers was Destry Abbott and his son Cooper, and they were talking about their uh, life in motocross and through uh, Grand Prix and Enduro Cross and Arena Cross. But uh, the main subject was um, Destry's struggle with uh, cancer. And I think you guys will find it interesting on how he's uh, fought cancer and still continuing to ride motocross. So I hope you enjoy the video and here we go. Boys, come on over here, man. We got Destry Abbott. We're gonna talk off-road racing. We're gonna talk how he got started. We're gonna talk what's gonna be in store. We're gonna talk about life-changing events that happened. We're gonna talk about everything right now. We're gonna get up close and personal with Destry Abbott. So, well, Destry, man, uh, welcome, welcome to the off-road expo, Cooper, man. Awesome to see you guys. And we're gonna talk about a lot of things that have happened in your career, including. Uh, this surgery, I wasn't even aware there was surgery, so we'll get started with that when we talk with you. But man, Destry, let's start at the beginning, man. You've been racing for a long time. I personally have been able to race against you. Not anything crazy. I, I never, <laughs> I, I remember the story I got that, uh, of, a, of a spark arrestor when I first met him, so we won't go on that. Let's talk about you. Where did you get started? How long have you been racing? And what do you remember your first race? Uh, yeah, actually, I do remember my first race. My dad raced motorcycles, and uh, you know, it was kind of in the family. Kind of like exactly what Cooper's doing now, and uh, it's been pretty awesome. 1983, which is uh, a long time ago for a lot of these guys, but uh, it was my first race. It was a desert race, ADRA, for some of those that remember those races, and it was up at Sinners, and uh, wow. I think I finished second in the beginner, a second, like, to last, and uh, followed the girl around the whole time, and uh, after that, I was hooked. You know, I was uh, not a good rider by any means, and that's why I enjoy doing, doing my classes with DA training, and... Uh, Trying to get that, making sure people understand, even the top pros, you know, they started at the bottom. So, you know, it's don't feel like you need to be there at the next level right away. And uh, I enjoy that. And, you know, it kind of took off from there. I was a late bloomer. It was early 20s, 23, when I signed with uh, Factory Kawasaki and Monster Energy Kawasaki. And I was with them for 20 years, which was uh, kind of insane to be there for 20 years. And, uh, racing professionally for that long and uh very fortunate but now i'm with ktm and working with the marketing doing testing and uh still getting a race but more uh for fun now well let's talk about it i mean uh one of the things that i always think about uh when i get announced if you are racing how old are you now because i know i'm 50 years old you got to be 48 <laughs> 46 somewhere there yeah i'm 47 so, 47 yeah, so yeah. i about nailed it yeah uh, so but you're still I mean, I watched you race recently, fairly recently. You're still very competitive in a pro class right now, racing with Cooper. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with Cooper and I is, uh, you know, he's 21 and he's racing professionally, races for a, a KTM factory satellite team and in, in the professional division. So with my training, I get to ride and train with a lot of professionals and also a lot of beginners. So I ride a lot still. And, uh, you know, as we get older, our risk to reward changes. But at the same time, it's uh, it's fun. I'm addicted. I love this sport. You know, having Andy put this on, this expo is amazing. And I was talking, we just walking around and stuff, and uh, getting to see all these people is is awesome. It's a it's a really good time. And uh, a lot of these people that drive in now have UTVs. I I would love to have a cage around me. I just can't I can't get there just yet. As far as uh, the wife let me spend that money, but uh, we're working on it. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Well, maybe we'll have to talk about that because after I chased you to Noah Bill and I couldn't do it, I jumped to the trucks right away. And it wasn't an age comes cage thing. It was a uh, I just got a Team Green ride uh, in. It wasn't a ride. I was a relief rider for Ted Honeycutt and some of the big names back. Yep. And uh, you know, but. I didn't have the talent you did, or I didn't learn it the way you did, but uh, I was still a good relief rider, and that was when they ran the trucks and bikes together, 
and Larry Ragland drove Arnold up my butt down the fire road, and we were, I was on a, uh, at the time I was on a KX500, and he came up right behind me at 100 plus miles, and when I say right behind, I'm saying right behind, if I'd have let off, I'd have got sucked up, and as soon as he passed me, I said, that's, I, I'm getting, this is awesome, but that's awesomer, yeah. <laughs> that's a word, yeah. but, uh, so I made it, so we'll probably have to try to get you into the truck, I have a truck, so, man, it, it would, I mean, it's not the baddest, nicest truck in the world, but I mean, it gets you in a cage, so yeah, keep the yeah. cost down, at least get you some seat time. But, oh uh, yeah, we had a UTV, and uh, you know, when, when the cancer thing happened for the wife and I, we had to sell some stuff, and uh, definitely something I want to get back into, and just wait until financially we're doing a little better. So let's talk about the cancer, if, uh, we can talk about it as briefly as you want, or, or as in detail yeah. as you want. Uh, pretty debilitating uh, uh, for you, I'm sure, and when I saw you was here at the event at the um, arena, uh, the Enduro Cross, uh, you know, it really rocked my world when I heard that you had it and how, how you got it. How, what were you doing or what was going through your mind when you first found out you had cancer? Yeah, I was actually still racing professionally. I was uh, in my early 40s, but I was still making pro main events, Enduro Cross, and actually doing pretty well. And uh, for that year, the, the, the health and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Tip top healthy shape and then bam. Yeah, that's that's the tough thing and that's just cancer. It doesn't uh, it attacks anybody, it really does. And you know, I lived a healthy life and really enjoyed it and uh, I just wasn't feeling well and I was up in Idaho for a race and uh, just not feeling good and didn't end up racing, which is not something I would normally do. I never pull out of a race and uh, flew home and went straight to the hospital because I was feeling that bad and two days later they told me I had leukemia and it was really uh, I maybe had a week to live, but they didn't start the cancer or start chemo and all that. And wow. uh, let's just say the next uh, year and a half was extremely, when I say extremely tough, it was really hard. And, uh, you know, then my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer three months after I was diagnosed. So it was a really tough time for us. But I believe the mental side is such an important thing. And I completely agree. You have to stay positive. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not always easy to stay positive when... You don't know if you're going to make it another couple of days, and it's a scary feeling that I uh, I don't wish upon anybody. And unless they've dealt with cancer, or they have people they've dealt with that has cancer, family family members. And uh, it was one of those things that my wife and I, when we were sitting in Houston where I was being treated, I'd sit in a hospital bed for five five days in a row and hooked up to chemo for five days straight, literally, and had a pick line, and uh, it was really brutal. And we had so many people in our industry motorcycles, trucks, off-road, it didn't matter, that were supporting us, you know. Oh, man, Financially, huge. neither one of us were working, so we had a lot of people step up, and my wife and I decided, let's start a foundation if we can get through this, and uh, now we have BH Strong, which is uh, bhstrong.org, nonprofit, 501c3, so all the funds go back to nice. giving back to cancer patients, and uh, I was dealing with someone this morning and last night, and, you know, that's something now I'm passionate about is helping people dealing with cancers, not just physically, but mentally and talking to them. And uh, yeah, we're very blessed to have that. Yeah. And, uh, the mental side is huge on that. Uh, so where does it sit now? Is there any chance of remission? Can it come back it, or is it done now? I, you gotta excuse my ignorance on no, that because no, no, you don't learn about it until it affects you, you hey, know what I mean? So. I, and I'll, I agree with you because I didn't know enough about leukemia. I didn't really know what it was. I had to research it when they told me what it was and uh, it wasn't good, you know, by any means, but uh, no, I'm in remission. I went into remission pretty quick, but I did two years of chemo, yeah, and uh, yeah, and it's really hard. And even nowadays, I still have ups and downs. But uh, you know, with the leukemia I have, it's it's blood, so I have like a block that's supposed to help it not come back. But there's a chance that most likely it will come back, and I'll have to do this fight again. And so that's why I live this day by day and enjoying life and uh, making the best of it because. Any of us, it doesn't matter what it is, we don't know what our future holds. And, yeah. uh, you know, I just want to enjoy people, I want to enjoy life, and uh, I'm making the best of it and just staying positive. All right, well, we, we definitely know about your incredible career in off road racing. What, give us uh, one of your favorite races that you've had throughout the years that, uh, and the organization that you really enjoyed, or one of the championships that really yeah. meant a lot to you. I, I mean, I was very fortunate to do pretty well. I won 10 national major championships for Kawasaki and, uh, I think some of my favorite memories are racing in Europe, actually. I love the European atmosphere in and, and Italy. Um, I went there and raced six days and got a gold medal. And uh, there's 25,000 fans you know, around the track. And each day it was just, it was 
absurd. It was just the bells, horns, chainsaws, and. Uh, and I'm sure you were a fan favorite at that too. I bet you yeah, got a lot of fans. Well, not really in Italy. They, right? I, I was well. There's six of us American riders that yeah. represent our country, kind of like the Olympics, and uh, you know they they want their Italians to win, of course. And uh, <laughs> but it, it is cool. They were skating. The Americans come over. Yeah, here. yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, we had a blast, and it was a good time. And uh, I was proud to represent my country. And Absolutely. actually, last year, where my son and I, Cooper, were down in Chile, uh, racing for Team USA yeah, again, it awesome. and uh, it was pretty cool. And I ended up crashing out, just a dumb, dumb move on my part, but Cooper got his first gold medal and uh, did pretty amazing. Yeah, I rocked amazing. the world when you did crash out. I mean, yeah. I, even I heard about it. It, it, it got around, you know, I think yeah. Zach, Zach shared it or something, but uh, it rocked around. I mean, if your career came to a screeching halt today, are you mad at what you've accomplished in your riding? I, I, I have no regrets. I don't care if I, I, I still want to race motors, or not necessarily race motorcycles. I love riding motorcycles. It's in my blood. It's always going to be in blood. People are like, when are you going to retire? I'm like, I don't know if I'll ever retire because I still want to go do some fun events. And uh, I love riding motorcycles. And it's honestly how I make my living now with doing training in my schools and working with top professional athletes to now beginner riders just trying to help them start out and learn the right way to ride. So let's jump into that. Uh, if, as a lot of people don't know, let's talk about your training courses or the schools. Where can I go to get them? Can I sign up for them? Can I get online? And uh, let's get address that first and then let's just talk about what we're going to learn at the school. Yeah, we have a booth just uh, kind of just west of lifted trucks over there in PCI, not too far from here. Um, but uh, yeah, d8training.com. I answer all my emails. I enjoy that part. And, uh, I love working with people. I actually do. And I'm really, you know, we, I don't know, not too many people here have probably seen our movie, but we have a movie that's a documentary. It's about myself. And it was at the movie theaters. And now it streams on iTunes, Amazon. And uh, it's called Strong, the Destriatic Story. And it's uh, it's 50 minutes. It's, it's a $9 and something cent video. You can buy and rent or whatever you want to do. And uh, it's a pretty cool video. I, I think a lot of people would like it because they see our tough times. They see the things we came with, or came, overcame, and they see our mental state of mind as far as you don't have to be fighting cancer. It could be physically, mentally, whatever it is. And uh, I just want people to realize there's a life beyond what people think. You know, it's about staying positive and the mental aspect. You have always been positive. I've never heard anything negative. I, I mean, you're, just, you're definitely an inspiration to me in my career, what I've accomplished. I haven't even come close you know, to what you've done. I have zero talent, but to be able to ride with you and see your career, it's been amazing. All right, uh, what, since we're talking about training and, and the, the things that you can teach to a rider, if I was, if you were to talk to any rider out there, how many people out there ride? Who, who rides motorcycles? Still right? Yeah. All right, if you had one thing that would pick up their uh, their speed, what would it be? What's the best thing you could give them? I, I, I usually start my seminars off with uh, teaching people. I'll have Cooper demonstrate standing on the motorcycle, show them the right way to ride the motorcycle before we even do the class. And then we start off riding, but standing. Really, one of the biggest things is standing, using your legs as another suspension device. But a lot of people want to feel more comfortable sitting because they feel lower. But honestly, when you sit, all the weight's on that seat. As soon as you stand, the lower center of gravity is a lot lower. The bike actually tracks a lot better that way. And smooth throttle control. You know, we were just talking, I have a, a women's class, class I'm doing at camp in uh, two months and then I have a Christmas camp that's already sold out and uh, we basically work on basics. Even my pro riders, people think we just go really hard all the time, but honestly we work a lot of basic skills like corners, acceleration, braking, proper form on stopping and not just to become a faster rider but a safer rider and somebody pulls out, you got to learn what to do right away and yeah. not panic and we work on all that kind of stuff. But getting back to what you're saying, it's just being smooth. Smooth is fast and smooth is conservative and you're saving energy riding the bike the right Absolutely. way. Absolutely, there was a saying that I learned, slow down to go fast. Not slow your speed down, slow down your busyness up on the, and I've seen guys, I used to race the 125 class, and I, I remember guys coming out of the gate just like spastic, I mean, they were fast, but at the end of the race, they, they didn't have the energy there to, to, to finish, so when you smoothed out and Well, well said, yeah. I like that, yep. yeah. I mean, that's what I remember, but man, what a great career you have. Let's talk about this young man beside you, Cooper, man, uh, is it ever hard following in your dad's footsteps, or do you always uh, you feel obligated? To <laughs> something? Do you feel obligated to stamp up and really put it put it down? Uh, no, it's definitely hard uh, coming behind him, but uh, it definitely helps in my racing career. He has so much knowledge, and uh, 
pretty much, uh, I don't think he hides anything from me at least, but uh, <laughs> he wants me to do well and uh, gives me every, all the tools I can to uh, make it happen. All right, let's talk about your career right now too. So right now it's a 21, I, I, it's baffling me that you're 21. <laughs> that means I've known this man for at least that long. <laughs> Uh, but man, uh, let's talk about some of your career highlights. What's some of the races that you, you are sticking with you that you remember? Yeah, definitely. Uh, probably in, uh, I think it's 2015, I, uh, I won the Junior Enduro Cars Championship, was, uh, which was my first bigger championship. So that was cool. And uh, this uh, year I was hoping for uh, more in the pro class. And uh, unfortunately, a week before I got hurt and uh, broke my wrist and had surgery and got a screw put through it. But uh, at least you're back on the bike now. and. Uh, gonna go for it next year so so we talked about our pup earlier and i didn't even know i mean i i, I dealt with the, a break um but i didn't even know arm pump could be solved with surgery let's talk a little bit about that yeah definitely uh i was getting arm pump so bad that i i literally couldn't let off the throttle and would just whiskey throttle and just wow. try and survive the first 45 <laughs> minutes of races pretty much and so got to the point where i was like i, I need to figure out something to do and uh they do a surgery where they uh, go into your forearms and they take out all the fascia in your arms and uh, it's, it's actually it's quick surgery. I was only out for a little over two weeks and I raced three, I raced two weeks later and our pump was gone. So it's You're definitely kidding, uh, that dramatic. Yeah, it, it's definitely something that was probably one of the best things I've ever done. Oh wow, that's, I mean, I can't even, I, I, it's like a carpal tunnel, you know, when you get that kind of thing done. But all right, well let's, um, what, in, to add to your dad, what are some of the things that, that you would give advice to somebody that uh, in their racing career or to go fast or what they, let's, let's talk about training program. What do you do to train? How about that? Um, really, we don't train as hard as everybody thinks. Uh, it's actually really training smarter than harder and uh, just, we actually do really work on a lot of fundamentals. Definitely putting in sprints and a lot of that. And everybody thinks we do like two hour motos because the races are two hours. And I can honestly tell you, I haven't done a two hour moto other than the races. Oh, wow. So it's like, you really just work on sprint speed because then when you're for those two hours, you, you do back it down compared to your sprint speed. So then it's a lot easier to hold that for that amount of time. And then you can sprint when you need to and uh, back it down when you need to. So you pick out something, uh, you pick out a discipline that you gotta work on, work on that for that time and perfect it and then add it to the regimen, is that correct? Yeah, definitely. So uh, I definitely race a lot of different races. I race extreme, enduro cross, works, all, all hair scrambles, everything. So kinda I always try and at least two, three weeks before just put a lot of focus into that race and then sometimes they're back to back which makes it tough but just Try and put a lot of focus into that race, and then, all right, get past that race and put a lot of focus into the other one. All right, who's some of the people that you're racing against? Who's your toughest nemesis, or who's some of the people that you could, uh, you know, recognize right now that rub you? Uh, yeah, definitely in Barrowcross, uh, Cody Webb and Colton Nicker, those two oh. are, those two are <laughs> dominating right now, and uh, definitely, uh, I went, I definitely, I've been practicing with them a, a little bit, and before the season two years ago, I went and stayed with Cody Webb and trained with him, and so, just, trying to ride with the fastest guys there is and, and see what they're doing and try and learn from them and learn from my dad and, and just try and get better. Do they show you any respect because of your dad? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, they, they push me around a little sure, bit, but sure, uh, sure. now... It doesn't have it on this event, yeah. though, but okay. But no, I, I, call that. I enjoy doing every type of discipline and definitely motocross helps you on off-road. Off-road helps on motocross, I think, and... Uh, Definitely yeah, would like to, in the next couple of years, fall, try and qualify for an outdoor stuff and go nice. race that and really just try and get better at everything. Okay, let's talk personal life. Do you play video games or do you, what's your personal life like? What, what do you do when you're not, when you're not in motorcycle mode? I think everything's motorcycle mode, really. Ah. Um, nah, I mean. You have a girlfriend? No, not no. a girlfriend. Uh, no. Good. Don't really play video games that much every once in a while. Get some mind out of it. But I think even when I do play video games, still motorcycle games, so. So you, don't yeah. have, you don't have something to focus on like uh, fabrication oh, yeah. or cars or anything? Yeah, no, uh, I definitely love, through high school I played all different sports. I ran track, I played basketball, I played football. And I actually, racing took off after that. I played sports all up and then I started racing. And so I, we have a, a little half court basketball court in our backyard and every Monday there's a, a gym we go to and we have a big group that plays every Monday night and just we all try and think we're like in the NBA, but really we're we'll probably just airball half of them, but it's fine. Sometimes those are the funnest because you know you're not under any pressure, you're not getting paid, you, you know, you don't have, you're not under any kind of performance deal, so those can definitely be fun. Well, right on, Kimberly, awesome, awesome job. Destry, let's talk more. What's in store? 
Uh, for you, where do you see yourself here in a few more years in this sport? Um, I got quite a few things on the plate. You know, there's a few things in the works. I'm getting more into the adventure bikes, KTM adventure bikes. I work closely with KTM, the marketing side, and uh, yeah, that's that's really good. I love that company. Really family based, and uh, that's growing. But my main focus is, of course, Cooper and our deep training on uh, trying to help up and coming riders from males to females. I work with all riders, and uh, I'm loving that. I actually, I vicariously lived through a lot of them, and after a race, they'll text me or email me, go, I got my first time I've ever won, and, and it's just neat, and it's rewarding for me to see them reaching goals that they didn't believe they were going to be able to do, and uh, I, I'm loving that. I, I love riding motorcycles, like I said, and uh, being out in the desert, in the woods, whatever it is, is uh, is my passion. You know, that when, with the scare of, of your health, I, I was thinking to myself, what's that going to do for the motorcycle, you know, motorcycle community and, and everything you've accomplished? You know, so many fans out there that, I mean, you've been a huge inspiration for. So it's incredible to see that you're pretty much doing this until the final days, man. Yeah, that's, you're the, that's the plan. All right, well, very good. You want to add anything here for this? No, I just, I'm glad right. you guys stopped by. I appreciate you guys hanging out. Does and, it, uh, any, any of you guys have any questions? Yeah, any questions? Let's, let's, uh, let's shoot for questions. Do you have any questions? I love questions. You have questions? Oh, okay. Let's start. Anybody? You want a question? What do you want? The women's class coming up. Okay. Uh, the women's class is February 11th, and uh, it's a camp. We're doing a two-day camp at my house. I have two apartments, and uh, we do a like Christmas camp. We have one coming up. That one's sold out. And then I have a female camp, the one I was just saying, February 11th, and it's from, I have a girl on a TTR 125 to beginner novice intermediates, and I've already sold five spots, and I just promoted it this week, and uh, we're doing a camp where they stay at the house two nights, they ride, they, we're gonna do uh, s'mores, we have fun games, and two days of riding, and uh, Cooper and I had that up, my daughter's helping out, and uh, she rides also, so it's, uh, it's a really good time. Sounds like a lot of fun. Where are you living these days? You're not out we, there. We uh, live in the Northwest Valley, Peoria, North Peoria. Yeah, so you've been pretty much in that area. I remember a race a long time ago at Canyon. It was like me, yeah. Zach, Eric Havens, uh, 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 I think even Ted Campbell was still there in that yep. And this desert bike just shows up out of nowhere. Rides <laughs> from his house, kicks our ass, and then, you know, then leaves. So that'd be that young man. He rode the bike there, raced with us, and then took off home. So, all right, we have another question here. You got a class for old guys? <laughs> what? For old guys, he's well, asking. Come on, I, you're, you're younger than I am. Well, I've seen you around this. I'm the old guy. <laughs> oh, wait a so, second. Oh, very good. Uh, right. Any more questions over here? Any more questions at all? Charlene, I know you have a question. I know that you are good at creating a question that would help. What do you have for question? I know you got something. Put her on the spot. Oh, yeah. Put her on the spot. So when you are working with your athletes, and you're trying to push them mentally. What is something that you work with mentally for them? Well, that's a great question. We were just talking a little bit before, and uh, training males and females are a little bit different. You know, males I try to push, but one thing I'm big about is positive. You know, tell yourself what to do versus what not to do. You know, you come up to sections, oh, dude, don't don't do this, don't, and that's what's going to happen. So you really want to tell yourself what to do. It's about staying positive and. Motorcycle racing isn't always positive. Like you're gonna make mistakes, and even when you make a mistake, it's not thinking about that mistake when you're already moving forward again. It's always looking ahead, always thinking about the things you need to be doing. And so it's it's back to that, that's that mental state of mind, and I'm big about that, especially with my pro riders and riders that I get frustrated, I get really upset, and I'm like, when you make a mistake, you're learning from that mistake. And so in the big picture, you're helping yourself. So. You know, it's like me losing races. It's not like, of course I wanted to win, but I tell my riders, I'm like, all right, so what did you learn at that race? Okay, now let's use that for that next event. And it might not even, I work with a lot of clients that never even raced motorcycles. I have quite a few doctors, and one of them's gonna be here in a little bit, and uh, he just loves riding. He wants to ride the bike the right way, which, like I said earlier, is gonna make you safer and a better rider. So it's not, I work with riders that are just racers, so. I enjoy working with all levels, and it's dealing with the mental state of mind as far as how to ride the bike, too. It's really a huge deal to really understand what's going on there. You know, uh, the books, The Secret, uh, all that stuff, they, they figured out that, you know, throughout the years, there's no positive or negative. What makes it negative is the toxicity that it produces inside your mental state. 100%. So if you're sitting there worried about that mistake, you're not going to perform to, your, to your, what you need to do. So you need to be able to, you can't necessarily get rid of it, but at least get it out of your way right now to focus on the prize at hand. 
And uh, there was a saying that I saw on Facebook that through a meme, I'm sure, that it said, you either win or learn. Not win or lose, win or learn. Because if you don't win, you, you've figured out what you did wrong there to be better for the next one. So that is a huge deal. And absolutely, um, motocross, I was more of a motocross than someone. It wasn't a, until Snowflake uh, 1993, that's where I met you, and that was my first desert race. Yeah. And, and uh, I learned from Paul Thede from, at Race Tech. I don't know if that name is about He had the first inspirational course, and it didn't only just teach me about motocross, what I learned watching that video, I still have it to this day. I can't find it online. I saw it on VHS, but I don't have a, a VCR that works. But, uh, We're old. Yeah. <laughs> but Paul Deed said the exact same thing a long time ago. You can't allow the negative in because that's what will hold you back. Set your set your mind on price. One other thing he said is that don't think you know it all. Yeah. Even if you're at the peak of your career, you still have something to learn. And that stuck with me and resonated with me through my entire life and, and got me here as a motorsports announcer. I, I agree with that. And even when I was at my top level and, you know, I was one of the top guys in the world in the country and uh, I didn't ever feel like I made it. You know, I always wanted more and wanted more. And I think that's kind of what life is, is, you know, not just settling on what you have. And, yeah, I just like to keep working. It's what, what am I going to do next week? What can I make better? You know, it's just, I think that's what life should be about. And of course, I enjoy it. But I still want to get more. You know, I still want to do more things. I want a truck now. I want, I want this other stuff. You know, and I don't know if that's, I want to say greedy. It's just what I want to work for and what I want to enjoy. Man, Destry has been an awesome top. You guys think? What do you guys think about Destry having stuff? He's done, man. Thanks, Put man. your hands together. Destry, you're gonna be here all weekend long. You have been an inspiration in my career, Cooper. You are still inspiring uh, right now, and I know you're inspiring a lot of the youth right now. So. Big deal, a big deal indeed. Uh, tell us about where your booth is, where can I come talk to you one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, so my booth is, uh, we're in the South Stadium, I guess it is, on the Northwest side over here. So uh, where you see lifted trucks, we're just uh, west of them on the left and uh, right by the door where you'd walk out. So happy to talk to anybody and uh, we have stickers, shirts, handing out free stickers, we have some shirts for sale. So. Uh, just enjoying hanging out right now. All right, was there any? Uh, there's talk of there, but you might do a course. No course today. You're not no, going. No, we, we had some issues putting some stuff up okay. and uh, liability. So I understand. So I'm here to just talk to people and help out. Hopefully. All right. Well, guys, get over there and talk to two Destry Abbott and Cooper. Will be there. You guys gonna be here all weekend? We are. Not we'll gonna be make here. Race? No, no. Right. We're gonna be here today and then all day tomorrow also. All right. Very good. What guys say? Big round of applause for Abbott. Thank you. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. I sure did. Uh, I've always been inspired by Destry's struggle with his uh, cancer and the fact that after he fought cancer, his wife got cancer, and together they both struggled and, and the outcome is good. They came up with a solution to the problem, which was DAH Strong. It's a foundation, and you'll find that link right down there. Uh, help out people and families that are struggling because of cancer and cancer survivors and a simple thing like bringing a meal to you or taking you to the doctor or helping you out and fixing something at your house because you can't fix it. The foundation is organized towards that. Great tax write-off. If you're interested, check out the links in there. I'll have a link for just the website and I'll have a link for any type of information that you might be interested in. Always looking for donations to help them out. Really good cause. Also, Destry teaches motocross. All ages, groups, uh, male, female, doesn't matter. DA8 training, down below you'll find it there. If you're interested in any type of training for motocross, uh, enduro cross, arena cross, or even uh, Grand Prix rides, Destry is your man to do it. Uh, I've watched him for many years at a racetrack I used to work at, and He's, he teaches everybody with the, the knowledge that he's learned over the years, and he's, he's a 10-time champion right now. And he has a lot of knowledge to get you through where you need to be, so check him out. Also, too, if you like my channel, give me a thumbs up. If you like my, this video, I, I appreciate it. Um, if you want to give me a thumbs down for any reason, hey, leave me a comment. Constructive criticism. I want to know what you think I can do to make any other videos in the future better because I'm not going to take and repeat this one. So um, if you're interested in my channel, right there.
There's a link to it. All right, thank you.